Hi there, this is Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I'm really glad that you're here with me today. This is a video that I really didn't even know I was going to make until a couple of mornings ago. What happened is, obviously with everything that's going on in the world, things feel very uncertain and very scary and I'd gone through a period of maybe three or four days where I pretty much constantly was watching the news. And that is good because it's nice to know what's going on and we all have to stay abreast of the situation and really concentrate on the things that we can do to keep ourselves and our family members and our friends safe through all of this. But sometimes there is overload where there's too much of, I was gonna say a good thing, but this is not a good thing. Too many kind of negative ideas and worrisome fears and all of that stuff that are coming in at us continually and it's a little bit of overload and it is quite stressful. So anyway, I got up a couple of mornings ago after having stayed up late in the night watching the news, woke up, watched the news some, got up and I was very upset about everything and this is not really very usual to me because I never eat in the morning. I always do my weight workouts in the morning and then I have my protein smoothie and then I don't eat until lunch. Well, basically, I got up and I went out to my TV room, watched a little TV, and there was some hummus in the refrigerator. And that's something I can really binge on, but definitely not usually at, you know, 4.30 in the morning. But I did. And I ate quite a bit of this hummus. And I thought, why am I doing this? And I thought, well, I'm so stressed out and the world is so crazy. Why not? Who cares? And I thought, you know, I didn't even feel like doing my workout. I didn't feel like going down and having my good, healthy movement because I thought with everything going on in the world, why does it matter whether or not I work out? And then I kind of had to kick myself in the butt a little bit and I said, now stop that Beth, no matter what happens. And I guess this is my message to you all. Time will pass, whether it's three months, six months, a year, something like that. Time will pass and this situation, like they say, this too shall pass. And the things that we've done during this process will really determine in large part how good we feel during the process and also we will get an outcome, no matter what that is, good or bad, in six months or a year when all this has passed, we will have some sort of an outcome. And all of a sudden I realized either I could give into those feelings of depression and just kind of give up and think, you know, what does it matter and eat poorly and not exercise and feel lousy and have a pretty bad outcome in a year or so. Or I could again kick myself in the butt, make myself do those things that I know are good habits and that will lead to health and wellness and good feelings over the coming year or so. And that's what I decided to do. I, I threw the rest of the hummus away and then I went in my bedroom and I got on my workout gear and I went downstairs in the basement and I did my weight workout and I felt so good afterwards because I realized that no matter what happens in the world around us, if we get ourselves a good set of healthy habits and do those things day after day after day, that in the end, when this all passes, we will be a lot better for it. And I have this philosophy that I've mentioned on my channel many times, and I don't want any of you people who are not Christians to take offense. And this sounds kind of odd in the face of what is obviously, well, really not a good gift, or at least it doesn't appear to be a good gift on the face of things, but I have this philosophy that God does not give bad gifts. And obviously God did not give this situation with the coronavirus to the world to cause all of the suffering. I, I really think God loves us and he would never do that to us. But when you use that philosophy and regardless of what religious faith you are, or if you have no faith at all, it doesn't matter. But the idea that God doesn't give bad gifts or the universe doesn't give bad gifts, if you want to frame it in that way, that's just fine. It helps us have a little bit of power over the situation and it helps us approach it with what can we get out of this seemingly negative situation that can be positive. For instance, when you say God doesn't give bad gifts, Lord, this doesn't seem like a good gift at face value, but I know you give us good gifts, so please turn it around for me and for all of the people in the world and help us get some gifts out of this situation. What can we learn from this situation? And in the last few days, I've been doing that, and it's not like I have this exhaustive list or anything, but I've realized one of the things that I've gotten out of this situation is that I've really slowed down, and I've realized that all those material things that we all think are so important really have attained their appropriate place in my life, and that is that you realize more and more and more in this, and I certainly have, 
that the things that I value in my life are the people closest to me, my family, my friends, my community, and trying to be of maximum service to anyone that I can impact in my small sphere that I have here in my life to help their lives be a little bit better. And the things that we can do to help everyone be better are everything that the CDC is telling us to do. We can stay in our house and have more social isolation. I, don't, I think they call it social distancing because social isolation doesn't sound very good. So, you know, do some social isolation, social distancing. Don't go out unless you can help it. Wash your hands pretty continually. And I have been using the birthday song to do that as everybody in America has been. And you're supposed to sing that song twice. But I thought, hey, let's give it a little youthful spin to help ourselves get a boost of youthfulness. So the song I sing to myself is, Happy 30th birthday to Beth. Happy 30th birthday to Beth. Happy 30th birthday to Beth. Happy 30th birthday to Beth and 60 more. So I, you know, obviously it is crazy. I do not look 30 and I know I never will. And that's not the purpose of that thing. But I do think that the things that we think in our mind do tend to influence our body. And I've actually been reading a pretty fabulous book about that. And I have to say, every time I do wash my hands to that song, it does make me smile because it's kind of silly. But those little things can kind of help us weather the storm and get a little humor out of the situation. Some of the other things that I've been doing that I would highly recommend for all of you in this time of stress is to realize that we can only live in this one day, one day at a time. In fact, that's an idea I got for the past 22 years that I haven't been drinking wine or anything else alcoholic for that matter. And it was funny, but just this morning I was reading in my Jesus Calling book and March 30th was trust me one day at a time. This keeps you close to me, responsive to my will. Trust is not a natural response, especially for those who have been deeply wounded, as we all have by this. And he says, exert your will to trust me in all circumstances. Don't let your need to understand distract you from my presence. I will equip you to get through this day victoriously as you live in deep dependence on me. Tomorrow is busy worrying about itself. Don't get tangled up in its worry webs. Trust me one day at a time. And it's so funny because one day at a time, again, is big within the support group program. But this idea of living in one day, enjoying the day, being mindful in one day, and, and not worrying about tomorrow, letting tomorrow take care of itself, it's certainly something that we all need to do. And another thing that I'm finding very useful is meditation. And meditation, sometimes people get all caught up in the idea that it's this very difficult thing, this highly spiritual thing, but really meditation is just calming down in the morning or the evening, sitting down in a chair and following your breath in and out. Sometimes it's helpful to count to yourself four breaths on the way in, six breaths on the way out, and then pause and then four breaths on the way in. Six breaths on the way out. And you just do that maybe even just five minutes a day and gradually you will start having the ability to slow down, not be so reactive to things, to be a little bit more optimistic, a little bit more positive. Meditation is a wonderful tool to keep us in the moment and really being mindful of what is in front of us. Another thing that is really useful is praying for others and having a prayer list. And really, even if you're not Christian, it doesn't really matter. This is my prayer list, and it's gotten rather long through all of the things that have been happening in the last few months. But I think praying is important, or even just sending positive thoughts and energies to others, even if prayer is not in your particular religious belief set, that's absolutely fine. More and more, scientists are realizing that when we think about others in a positive way or pray for them, there's an energy that goes out from us. In fact, everything energy. We think we're solid, but when scientists look down at the very cellular level, there's a lot of space between each cell. We may look solid and things around us may look solid, but they're actually not. They're actually just different amounts and types of energy. And I firmly believe that we can positively impact the lives of others by praying for them, sending them good healing thoughts if prayer is not in our tradition. That positive thought and prayer sends out an energy 
that more and more scientists are believing is actually real and can influence reality in a positive way. And the thing that is wonderful about keeping a prayer list, whether or not you believe in the power of prayer, is that when you have a list of people that you're praying for on a regular basis, it gets us out of ourselves. Because I can be a very selfish person at times, left to my own devices, and I have to remind myself to think of others, and a prayer list really helps us all do that. And especially in this time where it feels like we don't have a lot of control over anything, when we're praying for the people around us that we love in our lives, and maybe even people around us in the world that we don't even know, when we do that, we're getting away from our own little petty thoughts and desires and our own small worries, and in some way we're giving to others, which always makes us feel wonderful. Now, in addition to prayer and meditation, movement is extremely important for us. It's important for our health and our immune system, which in this time of CV, which is what I like to call it rather than coronavirus, I like to call it CV because it doesn't feel quite as scary as that word coronavirus. But when we embark on an exercise program and get some regular exercise every day, it boosts our immune system. It boosts our serotonin and dopamine so we feel better. It's just good for us in so many ways. And so especially while we're all spending so much time lately at home on the couch watching Netflix, you know, pull out your exercise bike and plant it in front of the TV and do 15 minutes on the bike or go outside and take a little walk. Just get up and get some movement in your life. Get your blood flowing, get your heart pumping, breathe in that air into your lungs. That's good for all of us. And just make sure that movement is a regular daily part of your life. Well, that's about all I had to share with you today. I hope you and your family are doing well through this challenging time. And I hope you're using this time to produce a good outcome in your life over the long term because we all have a lot of extra time now, now that we're not going out to movies because they're largely closed. We're trying to stay home, not going out to eat. We're staying home and cocooning. Let's use this time to reflect on our lives, to read, to care about the people who are all around us. If you have time to reach out and FaceTime someone in your life that you care about, that's a wonderful thing. In fact, one of the things I try to do is that every day I think it's very important to reach out to someone. And in fact, it's in my little habit list that I have, my list of gratitudes. One of the things that is supposed to make you much happier is reaching out to one person every day. And for those of you who didn't see my happiness video about that, I will link that below because that's got some great tips too. And I will say on a personal note, that today was a very important day for me because it was the first day that my sister and I at my company, we started working from home. We had been working in the office up until yesterday and it's not a huge company. We have like eight employees total, including the two of us, but we had a lot to do to get set up. We had to get the phone system changed over to kind of a cell phone system to where we could answer the phones from our homes. We had to get laptop computers for the girls and get them set up with programs so they could web in to do their work. And we did that for the first day today and I had a really good morning this morning. I wrote a good newsletter. In fact, I did it right over here at my two monitors here, which was really good. It's kind of nice to use the makeup room for something other than making videos. Okay, let's go ahead and choose a thought for the day. And in this crazy, challenging time, I hope God or the universe will give us a fabulous card that will help give us some guidance here. Please, Lord, give us guidance. Let's see. Ooh, I like this. I make decisions from a place of intuition and power. I make decisions from a place of intuition and power. Friends, I really do love this card, and it really goes back to prayer and meditation, as I was mentioning earlier. The main reason that I like meditation especially, of course I like prayer in general because I feel like you're helping others with your prayers and you're getting outside of yourself, which is always good, but the main reason that I like meditation is I really think that it puts us into that universal God flow. I really do believe that's the case. And it takes a little while to start feeling that. At first, you might meditate for a few days, first week, and think, oh, I keep having these thoughts rush in about, you know, what am I going to have for lunch? Or, you know, what did she say at that event that really disturbed me? And you have to keep kind of gently pushing those thoughts away. So sometimes you may not think that your meditation is helping, but over time, eventually, and I would say within three to four weeks, you'll start to experience this. Once in a while, you get little tingles that rush through your body when you're meditating. 
and sometimes things will start to come to you. Solutions to problems that seemed baffling to you before will just all of a sudden show up. A lot of the time I'll meditate and then all of a sudden out of the blue, something will occur to me and I'll, I'll be like, man, where did that come from? And I realize that it comes from calming down all of this craziness around us, calming down the racket we have going on in our head. Because when you make decisions from a place of intuition and power, you're able to get into that universal God flow and make better decisions. And those better decisions lead to a better life. Take care, friends, and please stay safe.